cheap DIY wireless cameras and cloud-free home automation, this time on Hack5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack5. Years ago I used to work at a company that installed security cameras. We installed a variety of types of cameras, everything from your good old coaxial to your PoE, power over ethernet. Uh, and even Wi-Fi cameras. Now, we tried to stay away from Wi-Fi cameras for a variety of reasons, one of which was uh, security. Because even these expensive five, eight, you know, even a thousand dollar cameras, individual cameras, had pretty much no security whatsoever. They wanted to connect over web, not WPA2. They all had default creds with no real way to change them. Uh, and even then, the data was just sent over the wire is unencrypted, you know, it was relying on the security of the infrastructure. And this was a real problem because at the end of the day, you could walk in with a little $10 chip, a deauthor, and knock the camera off of Wi-Fi and it wouldn't record anything anyway. Fast forward a few years and I've been wanting to solve this problem. Ever since then, I've wanted to work on building my own camera system, much like that out of a video game where you could just put up these little rapidly deployable cameras and they would just work. You know, they'd be secure, you don't gotta worry about deauthing or anything of the sort. Uh, and no one's ever really made anything like this. You can get $20 wise cameras, you can get $100 ring doorbell cameras, and you can get all these various cameras, but they're all cloud synced as well. And so I wanted to develop, to develop something myself, and I came up with this. Now this is a little $15 or thereabouts worth of materials a uh, camera I put together based on the ESP32 CAM platform. Now, ESP32, if you don't know, is a Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller that gets used in a lot of Internet of Things devices, such as Wi-Fi controlled switches and outlets and data loggers like temperature and humidity sensors and so on. But a company or multiple companies have started producing little sheet modules called ESP32 CAM modules, which have a camera sensor on them. And this is really great because these modules cost like seven, eight dollars a piece depending on where you get them. I've even seen them as low as six dollars. And you can pair them with a battery, a charging module, and put it all in a case and you have a little wireless camera that you can put magnets on the back of and stick on walls and doors and refrigerators and whatnot. And so this is something I've been working for towards quite a while. And I, this is actually running something called ESP Home which is a firmware that works with HASIO, Home Automation Assistant, something we'll be getting more into later, that lets you program it wirelessly. You put the bootloader on it, and then you can up upload various configurations uh, using config.yaml files, config.yaml files, which allows you to do various things, like make your own camera modules or Wi-Fi switches, temperature, humidity sensors, all the stuff I was talking about before, you can make yourself by just changing and uploading this code wirelessly and plugging a couple extra wires into this. And so far it's been a very seamless experience and that's what we're gonna get into here. I'm gonna show you how I put this camera together and how I programmed it with Home Automation, Home Auto, and I'll even show you how I programmed it using Home Assistant. So let's dig in. So I've just undone the two M3 screws holding the back panel on. The back panel has two neodymium magnets embedded into it so that you can stick it to anything ferrous. And in case you don't have anything ferrous to stick it to, you can use 3M very high bonding tape. This stuff is ridiculous. Inside we have the ESP32 cam module with the actual camera poking through here. And that is connected to a battery management board. Now this board takes USB power in, converts it to 3.7 to 4.2 volts to charge the lithium ion cell, which you can see here. That's just an 18650 cell with two wires connected to it. And then it also outputs that voltage up until the battery gets down to a certain level of, a certain state of charge, and then it'll cut the power off so you don't over discharge your batteries. So this both will charge and manage the discharging of your battery. And since this is only a one cell battery, we don't need to worry about balancing or anything of the sort if that was a concern you had. On top of that, we have a little power switch and intercepting the output of the uh, charging module here. And then lastly, we have an antenna connector. Now, something interesting about this antenna connector, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, let me zoom in. There is a tiny little zero ohm resistor here. You might be able to see that one, two, three pads in a triangle shape. 
Now, those pads are determining whether you're using the onboard antenna or the tiny little antenna adapter. I was wondering why my signal strength was so bad when I first got these modules with the external antenna on them, and it turns out that little zero ohm resistor was set to use the onboard antenna by default. And so I had to go in and use a very tiny soldering iron tip, and I'm gonna put some video on screen of this from the perspective of my microscope. And basically I had to turn that little three ohm resistor so that it went from here to here, and that was what allowed it to use the external antenna. So that was a, probably the hardest part about this whole project was changing that tiny little zero ohm resistor because it kept sticking to my iron and getting peeled away. Other than that, all I did was take off all of the headers that are normally here sticking straight out and replaced this header with a uh, just some right angle headers so that it sticks out of the case and I can use my little programming module I put together. And so this is just a CP1202 or 1202 programmer. Uh, any FTDI or UART programmer will work. And I have this little header I put together so that I can easily just plug it in and it will work. And I'll have all of the diagrams for all this linked in a GitHub down below as well as the 3D models so you can see exactly what the wiring's like. Next, we're gonna take a look at how you actually program these ESP32 modules, and then we're gonna look at some of the video that you can actually get out of these cameras. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. So as you can see, we're looking in the Home Assistant uh, ESP Home dashboard right now. And I just plugged a camera in over a UART to the uh, Pi that this is running on. Now for us to actually be able to detect that UART dongle in the ESP Home dashboard, we need to go over to HASIO and restart the ESP Home add-on. Now we have to do this for a number of reasons, one of which is apparently there is issues with Docker, which this is all based on, detecting a new USB dongle without the uh, container being restarted. So we've restarted that, we're just waiting for it to come up. And it's up. So we're going to click on dev TTY USB zero, that's our uh, UART dongle. And we're going to go to cam one. And this just is selecting our programmer. We're going to edit our uh, .yaml file. And we're going to put this code in, which will be linked down below, with the relevant uh, SSID, password, and IP address of the camera. And all of this config file sets up the camera pinouts so that the camera actually works. So we're going to click Save, then we're going to click Upload. It will run through the upload process. And it's been successfully uploaded. So once that's done, you can actually unplug the module, and at that point, you can make any changes to the .yaml file you want and upload it wirelessly. No need to plug it in again. So you could leave it deployed, and you can play with your uh, various settings, like your resolution, your bitrate, and all that jazz, just over the uh, Wi-Fi. And once that's all done, you can pop over your overview and check out your cam grid. And this is just a window I have set up with a couple of these uh, camera preview windows, and this lets you see the camera feed. So as you can see, it's not the greatest looking thing in the world, but it's $15, it's a lot more secure than a lot of the other offerings out there, and it's all within your home. You don't even need internet connected to this access point and able to use this. Now, if you wanted to be able to see your video outside of the network, you would have it connected to the internet, and then you'd set up a VPN or something like that so that you can access it securely from anywhere in the world. No cloud needed. And the great thing about Home Assistant and what we're gonna get into in the next video is you can add any sensors you want. You can have remote switches and all of that that normally requires a cloud connection to use. And you can do this all within your own network and even off of Wi-Fi or off of the internet entirely. So you don't gotta worry about anyone like me getting in and messing with your stuff. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to get some Hack5 swag such as stickers or pineapples or more, be sure to check out the Hack5 shop linked down below. I've been Glitch, this has been Hack5, Glitch out.